Hi Lenji, how's Chengdu? Uh, it's okay, but you know I have to wear a mask all the time. But here I feel I'm free. I'm really happy to be home. Zola. Sichuan province lies in southwest China. I come from a little village in the countryside, surrounded by the Tibetan mountains. Just like most young people in my village. I too moved to the city for work, but I was born and raised in rural China. I have seen this place change over the years. Today, I'm walking to my family farm with my foreigner friend to revisit Chinese countryside life. This is the closest town to my village, and today is farm market day. All the farmers they come from different villages to sell their products here. Here is bamboo shoot. I think he just picked it last night or this early morning. He cut it nicely. This is the Sichuan paper. The weather, the climate here in Sichuan province really humid. So we need to eat some paper to get rid of the wetness in our body. And this is Chinese notes. It's not real. It's for graveyards. Later on the way in our village, you're gonna see it. And I think a lot of people come here to choose these Chinese notes because one of the most important festival is coming, and they're gonna buy this and worship their ancestors. This is preserved egg. We use duck egg covered with clay and some ashes. After a few weeks, the yolk turns to green or yellow, and the cover turns to transparent like jelly. As you can see, the market is very interactive. It's not just shops selling things. You actually see how everything is made. It's like a workshop. Okay, I catch the big one. <laughs> I'm happy. Yeah. For the people who have been China, you must know our Chinese people just love tea, cigarette, and the last thing is alcohol. And here is Baijiu shop. Baijiu just our local spirit. In the countryside, people prefer to consume locally. Everything you see here, you will see growing in the field. What grows in the field? Is what you see on your plate. It's a more sustainable life than city life. In the cities, people can get their vegetables and fruits anytime in the supermarket. But here it's not the case. You either grow it or come to this farm market to buy it. This helps our rural economy a lot. For some farmers, they don't want to go to the cities to sell their produce. But they can still come here to sell their products and earn money. In this farm market, you can get barber as well. Only three kai. Want to try it? Most of the bikes used here are electric. Good way to reduce pollution. You know, if you walk in Chinese cities, you will notice that the style and aesthetics is very different from. Western styles. People use bright colors and disco music to catch the attention of people. Of course, we have the highest population in the world, so you have to be loud if you want to be heard. If you have a look of the style of houses in this town, we call these row houses. You know that back to thirty or forty years ago, people who's living in the countryside will have、uh, this individual house, but the life is quite inconvenient. So people move from countryside to this town and build this house as row house. 
The life has become easier, and the transportation is quite convenient. The sidewalk in our town is quite different. People use four of this space. You can fix your machine here. Or these people are peeling their vegetables. They are quite chill and enjoying to use this sidewalk. Sichuan Province is known to be the most laid-back place in China. People here love to relax, play mahjong, chat with their friends. This reflects in how we utilize our space. Everything is more communal and less individual. The street lights in our town is powered by solar panel. You know, our Sichuan region is not a sun region, but our local government is still trying to introduce more renewable energy to here. The basic facilities. In this town, have improved a lot, but we are slowly losing our identity. Until last year, this was Jilin Town, with the seventeen thousand registered citizens. But just like me, most people have moved to the city for work opportunities. So the government decided to club this town with another town for better administration. Now we are called Chinian Town. In China, small towns like this are disappearing. From here, you can see some Sichuan houses. Traditionally, people build their house with some clay, mud, and straw. Oh, later on, people start to use cement. In 2008, there was an earthquake. After that, people start to rebuild their house. So nowadays, in our village, most of, of the houses you're gonna see is rebuilt. Today, it's really difficult to find traditional house, but if you are lucky, maybe we can find it. See from here, the landscape is start to change. It's more countryside style. You see, this is a really common countryside house. You want to go inside and have a look? Sure. This is Zhang Yeye, Mr. Zhang, and he's 84 years old, but he looks really good. You see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come inside. Yeah. Have a look. So this is the typical entrance of the house, and the first thing in your side is Chairman Mao. Yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, Back to 20 or 30 years ago, in the family house, we can see this. But nowadays, only in this kind of old house, we can see Chairman Mao's portrait. And beside the Chairman Mao's portrait is the Chinese lunar calendar. For for this, uh, the farmer they do their farming and harvest. They according to the lunar calendar. This room is for storage. Like they put the dining table here, the stools. And some any grains like corn, they just put right here. Some tools they use for daily farming. It's quite convenient to take it. But people, they are living upstairs. Sichuan Province has a subtropical climate, and because of the high humidity here, most people prefer to live upstairs. It's also more private. The ground floor is only used for dining and storage. The area outside is used to dry grains or catch up with friends on a good day like this. Wow! You know, for this old couple, they even um uh, feed some geese, some chickens, and some pigs. Strong old couple. Hey, so this kind of shoes um made by straw or some special uh clothes. It's handmade, so in the past time, some people can、um, make it and wear it in summer. It's really cool. I really like it. It's fashionable, you know. Twenty twenty countryside style. Thank you, ha. Thank you, Yi Yi. Um, we're going to leave. Bye bye. The houses in rural China are bare minimum. No decorations. No paint. How we utilize space is more important than decorations or design. Sichuan receives a lot of rainfall, but last week was crazy. It rained so much, 
the river flooded and all these fields were damaged. Actually, this is season for corn and rice, but after this flood, sadly, everything is damaged by it. Hold on, guys. I think the fishermen they are the only person who love this flood because every summer after flooded, it brings a lot of fish to them. So they really enjoy fishing here. This is typical in rural China. This is how we make use of the space. I did a hitchhiking trip across western part of Europe, and outside their house, usually uh, it's a garden or some flowers for decoration. But here, every inch of land is used for cultivation. Even outside the house, here you can see the vegetables and fruit trees growing. Food plays an important role in Chinese culture. And it might have to do with our history. Today, in the cities, food is a status symbol. The richer you are, the more food you order. There's a lot of food wastage, but here, people live more simply. They value the effort it takes to grow food. The weather in Sichuan Province keeps changing. It could rain at any time. That's why farmers get this type of greenhouse farming. It can help them grow at all seasons. We have been working for quite some time, and we haven't seen so many people in the village. That's because only forty percent of China lives in the countryside, and the urban-rural ratio is not balanced. A lot of young people they work in the city. But there are no wages. They work overtime. That's why they don't have time to take care of their kids. We can see a lot of seniors in this village. They are taking care of their grandchildren. These are a new style of houses. After the 2008 earthquake, the government provided some subsidies, and these houses were built. More rural people live in the city these days. They all see this kind of house style in the city and then copy it, build it in a village, and then the local people they see it as well. Then they copy it again. So you can see this kind of style of houses everywhere in our village. This is a brand new house, maybe just built a few months. In China, raw material and labors are very cheap, so people just want to build houses quickly. Whether the design is suitable for the weather,、uh, or landscape, or earthquake proof, these things doesn't matter. People just want a house. Wow! Look at this. The countryside offers what I like to call active working. In the cities, we mostly practice passive working. Things are stagnant. I can pass by a building every day, and it's the same. But here, it's all active. I walk by this field now and see a wave of green. I walk by this field in spring, and it looks completely different. Filled with、uh, ripses flowers, you can never tire of walking here because all your senses are engaged. What's this? Uh, basically, all of、uh, these posters show the information of our village, and this one. Up、it's during the COVID time, and to tell the villagers how to clean your hands. But back to that time, it was not that bad because, like, our villagers they stay in their own house and doing farming just around their own area. And you know, the social distance、uh, in our village it was easy. Hey, look, this is really interesting. We can see two gods in here. According to Chinese lunar calendar. Uh, special days, they come here to put some fruit and some incense and decorate it. Pray for the next season to have good harvest. 
Would you say people in the countryside are religious? Uh, more than religion, I would say people more believe in nature, uh, like from their schedule. Uh, in summers, they wake up pretty early in the morning, around 5 a.m., and then they start their work. But after lunch, it would take two or three hours nap. Then they just continue to go their work until late evening. But things change in winter because we don't have that much things grows in the fields. People wake up late, they just relax and or read books. So from this, we can tell people are really follow the nature, follow the seasons. What we eat, what we wear, what we grow, all driven by nature. Life in countryside is basic and simple. And people living in the city is romanticize it. But at the same time, people living here romanticize city life. They also want to experience comfort and not work in the field all day. So, should rural China remain rural forever, or should it develop like the cities? It's a constant debate. Just like our graves and graveyards. Wow, graveyards, big issue in China. For our Han Chinese people, after people died, we bury the body. And uh, during the festival, we come here to worship. You know, we saw this kind of notes in the farm market. It's the use for worship the ancestors. But you know, this grave lands occupy too much lands in the village. So uh, the government's not, not allowed to do that. They said we have to burn the body and not bury it. You know what the local people do? They burn it. After they burn it, they bring the ashes to here and still bury the ashes. So it still caused the problem. I'm not the expert. But um, my cousin is working in the village committee. Uh, maybe we can go and talk with him. Here I got my cousin Zhao Lin. He's the deputy head in our local village committee. I was talking about how the graves caused the lead problem here. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about it? Uh, I would say uh, land issue definitely is mm -hmm. one of the big challenges in yeah, front of yeah. me uh, during my daily work. Traditionally, uh, Chinese people build the ancestors' graves with mm -hmm. just uh, mud and, uh, and earth. Mm -hmm. Could only last. I mean, within 100 years, perhaps. But now you see the grave like that is made up of the materials like uh, cement, uh, even steel and the bricks to last for many, many years. Who knows? Here comes with the conflict between, we call it dead people and alive people to fight for the land resources. People in urban area, uh, they started to develop um, you know, a new way to use the land. For example, the graves. Oh, yeah. So um, people started to build the type of building to mm -hmm. store the people's body ash. They can mm -hmm. go, still go there to pray and to worship their ancestors. Uh... But but one building could store like thousands of people's you know body ashes there. Wow. So it's a type of way to use the land more efficiently and wisely. But mm -hmm. in rural area, people still keep the you know traditional way. Even time changed, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in this new area. But their their mind, their their the way of bury their ancestors still. The traditional way like this but use new materials yeah, so yeah. with this we you know created a big issue of the use of land resources you know so we so one of our big um you know mission or or a daily work is educate mm -hmm. people and persuade people uh how to use the land more wisely and more efficiently mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. at, at the same time we use a uh, technology and uh, we got you know professional teams to to do the survey of the land and oh, design wow. the land and then at the same time educate the local people the local community mm -hmm, to explain mm -hmm. Uh, why we need to use a better way to burn our, uh, bury our ancestors, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a better way to build the graves instead of traditional way. Wow, yeah. very interesting. Thanks for your work. See you later. Yeah, you're okay. welcome. Bye. Bye.
In the recent years, the efforts of community work can be seen in my village. A brand new road was built by my family farm, making this area more accessible. A new hotel has been constructed to promote rural tourism. Local businesses, like bee farms, are making good profits. The people who once chased big city dreams are now returning to rural China to build their own dreams here. Okay, we're home. It's beautiful, isn't it? This is Warden Farm, my family farm. Uh, my uncle Lin Chang is the CEO of this farm. Four generations of us live here. Um, basically, it's a pig farm. My uncle is really passionate about changing the way the pig farming is done in China. You know, people only care about the money, not about the environment. So he came up with the 3-1 philosophy where we can balance the business uh, along with uh, the nature and the local community. Bonjour, Bonjour, Madame. Comment allez-vous? Ça va très bien, merci. So you know, for Chinese people, when we're traveling, we usually go to big cities. It's inspiring that we can see foreigners travel in the countryside. I think we got a pretty good tour in the countryside, but there's one thing we couldn't see. It's the traditional Sichuan house. It's very difficult to find, but I know a place. Let's go. Back then, the houses in the countryside were small and simple. No first floor, you know. You can see the walls are made of earth. This was the bedroom, and this was the prayer area. This was the kitchen, and you can see we used a very big vessel to cook. Be careful. This was the place for pigs and other animals. Wow, that was amazing, like time traveling. It's crazy that how much things have changed and it's still changing. China is always changing. <laughs> change is good and change will come, but I hope we retain the essence of rural life. Rural life is based on need. First is food. It's only when we have satisfied our hunger that we will turn to clothes. Then, maybe our standard of living. But urban life is based on want. The kind of clothes one wants to wear the kind of house one wants to live in, the kind of stuff one wants to own. These are sometimes more important than a healthy meal. COVID-19 highlighted this very aspect of urban life. While rural China remained safe and livable. And now, it's up to us to keep it this way. Less artificial, more natural.